On September 2, 2021, China's fourth stock exchange, the Beijing Stock Exchange, was established. Will it help attract overseas Chinese and international capital into China? Or could it be the beginning of a real financial disconnect between the U.S. and China? The Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, has recently criticized and demanded rectification from Chinese companies listed in the U.S. for their lack of transparency in financial information and independence, and for serving the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, or its military. However, the reality remains that the American public and financial community still welcome Chinese IPOs in the U.S. So far, the financial markets have experienced only a limited impact in what appears to be an increasingly intense confrontation between the U.S. and China. But the CCP appears to have taken the initiative to turn a small mutual financial adjustment into an intense confrontation. The SEC issued an investor warning on September 20, 2021, urging investors to be wary of the risks associated with Chinese companies listed in the U.S. It explained that some Chinese companies, for example, have circumvented U.S. market rules and created a class of companies with contracts, but having no controlling interest, also known as Variable Interest Entity, or VIE. VIE structures involve two entities. The first is a shell company located outside of China, usually in a tax haven such as the Cayman Islands. The second is a Chinese company that holds the necessary licenses to conduct business in China. The two entities are linked through a series of contracts. The SEC said Chinese companies often use VIE structures to list in the U.S. because the communist government restricts foreign ownership of companies in key industries in China. When selling shares to American investors, these companies raise capital without allocating ownership of those companies to them. In other words, when foreign investors buy shares of a Chinese company using VIE structure, they are buying shares of a foreign shell company rather than the company's actual business in China. And the Chinese company in a VIE structure may be subject to Chinese jurisdiction in the enforcement of any contracts. According to WIND, a database on China's macro economy and industries, as of August 2021, nearly 200 of the 285 Chinese companies with VIE structures were listed in China. In July, the SEC said it wouldn't allow Chinese companies to raise capital in the U.S. unless they fully explain their legal structure and disclose the risk of interference by the communist government in their operations. According to the legislation passed on December 18, 2020, entitled Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, the securities of Chinese operating companies will be delisted if their audits fail to meet regulatory requirements for three consecutive years. A Chinese media outlet, Jiamian, reported that Chinese companies currently account for the majority of foreign listed companies that have failed to undergo audit reviews by the U.S. PCAOB, or the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. As the U.S. begins to address these issues, the VIE structure is now much less attractive to China. In the face of the SEC's new requirements, if the Chinese government and Chinese companies can make the necessary adjustments, there is still plenty of room for them to grow in the global financial market, and it may well be a good time for China to further strengthen the domestic capital market. However, the track record shows that while the CCP is concerned about its economic power, it's also concerned about how it's perceived, security, and most importantly, control. They seem willing to sacrifice the monetary gains from IPOs in the U.S. if it better protects the values of an authoritarian society. Carson Block, CEO of Muddy Waters Research, has predicted that if Chinese companies essentially leave before the tough U.S. delisting requirements take effect, then the Communist Party will pitch at home that Chinese companies are leaving the U.S. out of strength, not because they are being driven out. On September 2nd, the CCP leader, Xi Jinping, first mentioned the Beijing Stock Exchange, and on November 15th, it was open for business. This speed is unprecedented under the Chinese Communist regime. What happened on November 15th was that within five minutes of the market opening, all 10 new stocks surged and triggered a trading halt. At the same time, most of the stocks on hand also rose. However, it's widely believed that this is a gift to the party leader from various Chinese funds. 
The Beijing Stock Exchange, or BSE, is the fourth stock exchange in China after Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong. The Chinese government says the exchange can serve as a source of capital for innovative small and medium-sized enterprises, supporting China's industrial structure and reducing its dependence on foreign capital and technology. In the age of the Internet, with online trading available everywhere in the world, the geographical significance of physical stock exchanges is becoming less important. The small to medium-sized enterprises, or SMEs, with little information are not particularly attractive to average investors. That's why it's better for SMEs to attach themselves to large stock exchanges. Setting up a separate Beijing stock exchange in the hope of raising capital for SMEs may backfire. Many experts believe that the BSE is an attempt by the Xi Jinping government to strengthen Beijing's position as a political and economic center. Listed Chinese companies are now gradually withdrawing from the U.S. stock market. The Chinese government has implicitly blocked any hope of future overseas IPOs for new technology companies that are still taking shape. According to an expert, this indicates that the current Chinese government is attempting to disconnect itself from the U.S.-dominated capital world and create a financial system independent of the West. The BSE will not only take care of the highly risky new third board companies, but the Xi Jinping government is likely to try to create a new, unique Chinese capital market that isn't dependent on the Western system and that can both attract overseas Chinese capital back to China and induce international investment leading the world. Furthermore, in 2021, China's capital market, the Shanghai stock market, was once the second largest in the world in terms of turnover, behind only the U.S. New York stock market. However, given the size of China's economy, which ranks second globally, the performance of China's capital markets is noticeably lagging behind that of the U.S. Take the Shanghai stock market as an example. In June 2019, the Science and Technology Innovation Board, or STIB, China's NASDAQ, was established in Shanghai, specifically targeting the new unicorns and small and medium-sized companies with high technology content that have burgeoned in China in recent years. Two years later, nearly 300 companies have been listed on the STIB with a total market capitalization of nearly 5 trillion renminbi. It seems to be quite an achievement. However, problems persist, such as the uneven quality of participating companies, inadequate disclosure of information, and the proliferation of speculation. For example, the average net share price ratio and cost-benefit ratio of the board in 2020 are 8.9 and 87 respectively, which are much higher than the 3.8 and 26 of NASDAQ and the U.S. Moreover, not only has the size of participating foreign capital been limited over the years, but the lack of confidence in China's capital market is also evident as some of China's more competitive, large, and new startups such as Alibaba, Xiaomi, Tencent, China Mobile, and the four state-owned banks have gone public in overseas markets. I'm actually a stock enthusiast, and I've been playing for two years, and I've lost a lot of money. I made money at the beginning, then I traded every day, but I lost money every day. It's too hard. I warn people not to play with these stocks. I've already lost 200,000 renminbi, or 31,300 USD. The stock is very difficult to grasp. I could see that the stock had been rising in the past few days. When I bought it, it started to fall. I don't know what happened. It's like someone is watching you. Why do Chinese people and local companies distrust the financial markets of one's own country? It's because, compared to the real economy, financial markets are more dependent on the support of a relatively healthy system including three major components. First, a rigorous, fair, and clear legal system. 
Second, a culture of honesty, integrity, and non-deceptive behavior of participants. Third, a government that is committed to neutrality and fully respects free trade. These create the heartbeat of a market economy. But China's red regime has never wanted to step away from the financial markets and be a truly neutral law enforcer. For example, China's recent intervention in IPOs or the forced removal of commercial apps from the market highlights the misplaced government role. In each of the three supportive components required for healthy financial markets, China has serious problems. For example, the Xi Jinping government's slogan of common prosperity has left businesses with no clear laws to follow. In addition, the qualities of civil society, such as openness, transparency, honesty, and trust, are severely lacking in present Chinese society. In 2011, more than 50 Chinese companies were delisted from NASDAQ after massive fraud, costing billions in market capitalization. On April 2, 2020, China's largest coffee chain, Raixing Coffee, listed on NASDAQ, admitted that 40% of its annual sales were fraudulent. Now the Chinese economy is in recession. In 2020, the Chinese government proposed that China's economy should be primarily based on a domestic cycle with a strategy of dual domestic and international economic development. It reveals that the Xi Jinping government is trying to take the path of self-reliance in the face of deteriorating relations between China and the US. Meanwhile, China's policies have taken a drastic left turn and the Chinese public's hatred of the rich has risen, driven by the Chinese official media. Capital and capitalist have become derogatory terms in China. Such an environment may be threatening to international capital. However, some of the current data show no decrease in international capital entering China. According to recent calculations by the Financial Times, the total amount of Chinese stocks and bonds held by global investors rose by 120 billion US dollars in 2021. At the end of September 2021, international investors held about 1.1 trillion US dollars worth of renminbi denominated equities in fixed income securities, an increase of about 119 billion US dollars from the end of 2020. 在全球布置新兴市场发展中国家的债市的投资配置当中，中国仍然是占大头。在九月份呢，有大概一百五十亿美元的资金是流入中国市场，其中一百亿是流向债券市场。所以这个就充分说明呢，中国人民币这个债券
and has raised more than 320 billion U.S. dollars in global equity capital markets for Chinese clients. In August 1995, Morgan Stanley took a stake in China International Capital Corporation, or CICC. CICC is the first Chinese foreign joint venture investment bank approved by the Chinese government. These financial conglomerates have, in turn, reaped significant rewards in China. For example, according to a report published on China's Caixin website in 2011, American banks made more than 20 billion U.S. dollars in six years from their stake in China Construction Bank. Tencent Financial reported in 2013 that Goldman Sachs made 7.28 billion U.S. dollars in seven years from its investment in the Industrial Bank of China. However, the conflict within the CCP is a problem that Wall Street bigwigs can't solve. As we have explained in previous episodes, Xi Jinping's biggest political rival is Jiang Zemin and his group. Jiang is the former party leader who has held de facto power in China for more than 30 years and has many old friends on Wall Street. The struggle between the top leaders of the CCP is truly a duel of life and death. As Xi Jinping has taken more and more power from his political enemies, his administration has begun to choose partners on Wall Street. If Shanghai is the base of Jiang Zemin's group, then Beijing is the base of Xi's camp. Now the U.S. government is reflecting and taking action. On November 8th, the Federal Reserve released a financial stability report warning of financial risks in China. The Fed surveyed 26 professional investment institutions, funds, and policy advisors. The results showed that between August and October 2021, Respondents identified Chinese government regulation and its real estate market risks as the third most significant risk to global financial markets over the next year to a year and a half. It was closely followed by tensions between the U.S. and China. Has the decoupling in the financial chain between the U.S. and China already begun? We believe in addition to the international environment and the internal struggles of the CCP, the answer depends on whether international investors have a clear understanding of the CCP regime and the Chinese economy.